No Child Left Behind didn't tell us stuff that we didn't already know about how bad some schools were doing versus others. It gave us numbers to associate with those things. And for some people, they need numbers more than they need to ask a community member, how well is your school supporting your kid? And I get that. What, what it has done, however, is created this entire industry, both um, the private sector and the public sector, and it's created all of these pressures and all these punishments that create trains of curriculum that the kids have to find a way to jump on and hold on. And if they can't and they fall off, then those kids actually are left behind. We've got pacing calendars, we've got benchmark tests, we've got standardized assessments, some of which are norm referenced, that are, which is totally problematic. And we need to return to more student-centered, personalized, customized forms of education in diverse classrooms so that we're not creating these homogenized approaches that are far too dedicated to efficiency than they are to diversity and the unique needs of kids in our schools. Um, so I think the reason why we are where we are is that we're responding to a policy initiative and a culture in the United States that is not serving public education well. And I discovered this wellspring of new ways of um, understanding motivation. So briefly, self-regulation is really key and surprisingly important because it's the part of the motivation that is most connected to a student's sense of agency. When they're reading a text, they're looking at something, and they're pouring through it, and they find their minds wandering, as we do as adults also, and they get halfway through a paragraph or all the way through a paragraph, and they ask themselves, what just happened in that paragraph? How do I think about that? How does that connect to my prior learning? How does, what am I supposed to be doing with this new information? The, the learner, the self-regulated learner that is able to do that self-check and that planning and that interactivity with their own learning is a student that will be much more likely to have much greater successes later on because they're an agent in their learning rather than just passively receiving a text or passively receiving an activity. Where I think it's going and where I hope it's going is that I hope that we can more respond to a research data-driven assessment of what works in schools and what works in classrooms rather than a political wind perspective on what most works. We need to pay less attention to the rhetoric of this party or that party or this union or this administration or this municipality or that state house or whatever, although those things are all super important and those are key players. But those folks need to be finding out what the research suggests about what works. And what we're trying to say in our work and what we're trying to say in this conference is that student-centered learning has proven its worth in the classroom. It's proven its effect on academic achievement. It's proven its beneficial outcomes when it comes to behavioral change in schools and communities. We don't doubt this. We need people to recognize it and start making change based on it. That's where I hope we're going.